Hi everyone, it's Don once again with another video for you. This is video number 134. And today I'm standing out here at the Okahumka Recreation Center on the boardwalk, and behind me is the location for Harry and the Natives. That's right, Harry and the Natives, not Harry and the Neighbors, not Harry and the Hendersons, which I keep wanting to say. <laughs> it's been crazy trying to get this right. I've probably had 30 people between emails, text messages, and social media platform telling me, oh, you got it wrong, you got it wrong. Well, yeah, I did. I can't believe the new year is already here. Where did 2023 go? I'm still trying to catch up with the month of March, and here it is coming into January. Well, time flies here in the villages, and along with that, lots of construction is happening. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at some of the areas under construction, including Eastport, Middleton, the village of Richmond, and some of the commercial areas that are being built in and around the villages. I hope you enjoy this video. I've enjoyed making it for you, just like I've enjoyed making all the ones in the past year, and I look forward to many more in the upcoming year. So let's get started. Our first stop on this video is going to be the corner of 466A and Powell Road, where there's lots of construction going on. The Home Depot at the corner of 466A and Powell Road is coming along. It's surprising that the parking lot isn't paved. In other buildings, such as Hobby Lobby, that was done early on. Here it's just the opposite. I tried to take a quick peek inside, but I couldn't see much. But it is obvious, based on this lift, that they are working the interior now. No official date has been announced for the opening of Home Depot. But looking at it, comparing it to where it's at with where Hobby Lobby was at this point, my best guess is about three more months before it opens. What's going in in this lot? I don't know yet, but based on its size, it's either a small retail establishment or possibly a gas station. CVS is also coming along. They've got the parking lot paved now on this building. They haven't started stocking the inside yet, but being that it's a smaller building, it will probably be open a lot sooner than Home Depot. I'll turn around and we'll get a look at the work that's going on at Panda Express on the opposite corner. Looking at the other corner, this is the location for one of two Wawa's scheduled to be built in Wildwood. And just next door and across the street, we see that Arby's is now open. We'll move about a half a mile to the east now, and we'll see where Target and a few other buildings are being built. Here you can see the footprint for the Target store. And as we rotate around, this will be the parking lot. And towards the front, where 466A is at, this is going to be another retail building, and it will also have an Outback stake. And next to it is where Ashley Furniture is scheduled to be built. There has been a huge amount of building here at the Trailwinds Plaza over the last five years. And the property is getting close to being full. This is the Wilds. This is an apartment complex, 400 units. And we can see where Lowe's is at, Publix. And we'll rotate around a little bit more. And there's the Circle K gas station and a few other things. The lot at the top of the screen that's been cleared is where Mr. Car Wash is going in. And this lot is where a new hospital is supposed to be built. When will they start on it? That's anybody's guess at this point. 
Let's face it, we're not as young as we once were. Climbing those old-fashioned attic stairs to get the Christmas decorations down or to stow those family treasures is just too dangerous. Magic Stairs is the safer alternative. Real steps with safety rails at a safer angle and safety rails in the attic provide the safest attic access available. Having troubles getting things to and from the attic? The Magic Attic Lift can be there to help. Designed by Village's resident Ron Burner, every Magic Stairs and Magic Attic Lift is custom built in their Ocala, Florida factory and installed by their technicians. Why take chances? For less than the cost, cost of one emergency room visit, you can have Magic Stairs installed in your home. Magic Stairs, the safer, more convenient alternative. Next up, we'll head to the south and we'll take a look at the work going on at Edna's. Here's the new kitchen area being built at Edna's. It's been underway for a couple of weeks now and it's supposed to be finished sometime in early spring. It will be a shame to see the food trucks leave because I thought it added a little bit of different kind of character to the area and gave it a lot more flexibility. But apparently it was like sitting in an oven working in those food trucks so they opted to go for this. The food will be the same though from what I understand. As you can see by the size comparison between the food trucks and the new kitchen, there's going to be a lot more room for the people to work in there. So hopefully the menus will expand and they'll have more room for storage so they don't run out of the more popular items on the menu. We're going to move just a little bit farther south now to Magnolia Plaza and look at what's going on with CVS there. As most are aware, no progress has been made on this. It's still on the agenda from what I understand, but corporate is dragging their feet. I guess they're focusing more on the 466A and Powell Road CVS. Interesting though, this is the last undeveloped property in the Magnolia Plaza area. So once they finish here, any new development will have to be in some other area. Maybe on the other side of the turnpike, who knows. Now let's move a couple of miles to our west to where they're building the Coleman Ridge development. Coleman Ridge is another family development similar to Middleton that's being built. Coleman Ridge is at the point where they've got all the utilities laid in, the streets are all laid out, street signs are up, so it's just a matter of when will they start building houses. Just to the south of these two retention ponds, is where 301 is scheduled to go across and join up with its current path. Between the end of the residential area and 301, there's a small commercial area that's scheduled to be built there. What's going to be in it? Anybody's guess? Probably a handful of small shops and maybe a restaurant. Who knows? The rest of this cleared area is the Marlino Tool Industrial Park. This property, the Rick Scott Industrial Complex, and most of the property on the southeast corner of the intersection of the Turnpike and I-75. At the top of the screen is the village of Hammock at Finney. And some place through this large open area is where 301 is going to run when it's rerouted. The plans for the widening and rerouting are still in the works, but work is scheduled to start sometime in the mid to latter part of this year. I'm going to take a closer look at some of the lots here in Coleman Ridge. Now you'll see the stub ups for the utilities in that, but the other thing you'll see is a green tinge. When I first pulled in I thought, wow, the weeds are really coming in quick. But then I realized, no, they have planted grass here. So this place is obviously going to be on hold for a little while, so they've planted the grass to help control the dust. Let's head back to the north now, to the village of Richmond, where work has been going on for a couple of weeks now on this new area. As we move first to the north, we see this large open field. 
This is all slated for commercial development sometime in the distant future. Nobody really knows. I haven't seen anything about anything going in there. So we'll just keep an eye on it and wait and see. This is the north entrance to the village of Richmond. Work is progressing quickly on the groundwork. Now, I saw some online chatter a few weeks back, some people saying that this was going to be a commercial area. It's not. It's all residential. As you can see by the little map on the right, it's two units. 142 is obviously going to be some sort of villa community, courtyard or patio villa, probably courtyard. And 115 is probably going to be designer or possibly even veranda homes. We'll see when they get farther along. There's a lot of interest in this area because of its location and its proximity to Brownwood. The other thing that's driving interest in this is the lack of some commercial development farther south. The commercial development's coming. It's just going to take a few years. Unfortunately, they can't build commercial developments before they build the houses or the businesses go out of business. You've got to have the customers. That's all there is to it. The old myth that, oh, they used to build all the amenities first. Well, that's true, but... Commercial development isn't an amenity, it's a business, and those get built after the homes. So here's an update to the map that came in just before I published this video. And you can see that there are new lots plotted in some of the areas. At the top of the screen you can see Oak Hollow, Well Point, and now the village of Enfield. The plotting of lots has started there. Also, Water's Edge, all the lots are plotted there as are most of the ones in Shady Brook and Moultrie Creek. And something new that popped up is more Middleton homes. This is in a future phase. This is the area just to the north of the downtown area. Now you see in the back, there's a big blank spot between the red line and the homes. That, I believe, is where the 400 apartments are scheduled to be built. We'll keep a close eye on it and see what happens. Since we're in the area, Let's go on over to Eastport and take a look at the construction happening there. The first building we see here along Southern Parkway is the new Villages Health building that's being built. We'll rotate around. This first lot is a bank and this second lot will be a golf cart store. Now this intersection right here, I'm slowing down so we can get a better look at it. This is probably one of the most dangerous intersections I've seen. Because of the golf cart tunnel, there's a rise and then a drop, but it blocks the view of the oncoming traffic. And it's traffic that's just coming out of a traffic circle, so it's trying to accelerate. So this is gonna be a problem. Sitting in my own truck, which sits a little higher than most cars, I have a difficult time seeing the oncoming traffic. So you'll need to be careful once this road actually opens up to traffic. Here we can see the platform tennis, pickleball, and tennis courts being installed. Also, work is continuing on the softball fields. Eastport is certainly going to be an interesting area with the combination of recreation and commercial properties making the town square definitely unique. Interestingly, Eastport is about five miles from Brownwood and Brownwood is about five miles from Lake Sumter Landing. I'll discuss more about why this distance is important later in the video. On the waterfront, you can see the ramp and dock area for the dragon boats. This is going to be important for this purpose-built lake that's been designed specifically for dragon boat racing. Behind this section of the retaining wall is where they intend to build a hotel. I'll do a low-level flyover of Sunset Island. The building up ahead that's being built is known as Building 12. There's no real description of it, but if they hold true to form, this will probably be the sales center for this town square. Along this section of the retaining wall, between the two notched sections, is where the entertainment area is going to be in Eastport. This area between the trees on the right and the berm on the left with the three ponds is where the driving range is going to be. I don't believe the ponds are staying there though for the driving range. And the berm is to hopefully stop the golf balls from hitting the cars in the parking lot. 
if you see my truck parked in this parking lot, I may be on the driving range. And if that's the case, I don't recommend you park anywhere near the berm. I won't be held responsible for any damage. We'll get a nice high look of the lake. This video is actually being shot as part of a then and now segment that I'll do again probably in six months to a year to see how things are progressing. Just beyond the work on building 12, you see in the ground the outlines for the footers for the foundations of the Olympia Recreation Center. Here's another look at the athletic courts being built. And we'll rotate around and we'll get another look at the pond that's being built for the purpose of the radio controlled boats. Looking for that perfect Murphy bed for your bonus room? Look no further. We offer three things. Best quality, best service, best warranty in the industry, bar none. Give us a call, set up an appointment, 612-598-3303, murphyoffice.com. As most of you know, my two golden retrievers, Lily and Sully, this summer had a litter of puppies. Lily was very big with puppies, as you can see. The puppies were born on July 1st, and they are now six months old. This is Raina. She lives in Orlando, and you can see she's pretty good size. Next up is Hope. Hope lives in the village of Dabney. She's a big girl, about 50 pounds, and wonderful behavior. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is Daisy. She used to be called Charity or Red, and she's quite the handful herself. What you got there, Daisy? She's a good girl, though. This is Gracie. She was the biggest of the litter, and she lives in the village of Deluna with her best friend. And this is Sophie. She lives in the village of Richmond. She's another big girl with a good friend also. And this is Zoe. She was the noisy one in all the videos. She lives in Wildwood with three young boys and two of her best friends are horses. And this is Gus, the only male. He lives with my vet down in Bushnell. He looks the spitting image of his dad, Sully, and had a chance to meet both Sully and Lily once again just last week. It was truly a joy this summer, raising the pups and then finding them new homes. And we were blessed to make a, a decent profit that we were able to donate to two local Golden Retriever charities. Next up, we're going to go a little farther south to where the village of Moultrie Creek and the village of Shady Brook are being built. This is the first neighborhood in Moultrie Creek. This is where the Model Home Center is, and it's located just to the north of the Shallow Creek Country Club. Coming up, this is the Neighborhood Recreation Center, the swimming pool, shuffleboard courts, and postal station for the village of Moultrie Creek. Just to the left of these homes is Very Loop. This is the first section of custom-built homes being built in Moultrie Creek. On the far side of Central Parkway are more of the family home lots that will eventually be built in Middleton. One of the hardest things with doing these drone shots in an area this big is maintaining line of sight on the aircraft, which is what's required by law. It's very difficult, and sometimes I have to fly it three or four times, move myself around to make sure that I can always see the aircraft. It's a very big deal in the droning community to maintain line of sight. Unfortunately, some don't follow the rules. Hi, I'm Jeff Monash with Village Air Filters. Are you tired of wasting money on throwaway paper air filters? I can save you money with my lifetime permanent washable air filters. Just buy it once and never buy another air filter again. 
rinse it out, and then just slide it right back in. My filters are custom made in the US and they have a lifetime warranty. Give me a call at 352-388-1230 or visit my website at villageairfilters.com. That was the new fire station 48 that we just saw. And as you can tell, it's well under construction. And this is the Seleucus Recreation Center that's being built. This is a village recreation center, which is the next step down from the regional recreation center like Everglades and Olympia. This is two sets of patio villas that are being built in the village of Moultrie Creek. And up by the pool and postal station, there was two sets of courtyard villas being built. These villa communities are typically built first when they start these new neighborhoods, and they usually sell very fast. And believe it or not, it's sales that drives many of the things that happen here in the villages. That's the developer's business, to sell houses. One of the things that changed recently was the opening of golf carts traveling from the Sawgrass area down to Middleton. Why would they need that? There's not a whole lot to see out here, and there's not many people from Middleton that want to make the long trek up to Sawgrass Grove. No, it's about sales, getting people to come down here, take a look at the new homes being built, the new sites, and possibly purchasing a new home. Not a bad thing. That's just business. Here's the two sets of courtyard villas I mentioned earlier. The ones on the left have a couple of unique lots that stick out into the wetlands. You can see the three jut outs here on the left. We'll take another quick fly around the Moultrie Creek Recreation Area before moving on to the village of Shady Brook. This fly around Moultrie Creek and the one coming up around Shady Brook are both part of upcoming then and now segments. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Now. You're looking at now, sir. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? We passed then. When? Just now. We're at now now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. I can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. When will then be now? Soon. This is more of Moultrie Creek. This is on the south side of Bar Boulevard, which is the road going across the bottom of the screen. Bar Boulevard goes all the way up through the middle of Main Street in the Eastport Commercial District. Here's another quick look at the Seleucus Recreation Center being built. And as we pan around, we'll also see the Shady Brook Neighborhood Recreation Area. The main road through the middle of the screen here is Marsh Bend Trail. It will continue on to the southeast, where it'll end up going into Lake County and the Secret Promise portion of the villages. We're now looking at the village of Shady Brook and its buildup around the Shallow Creek Country Club. The road on the upper left side of the screen is Bexley Trail. It continues on all the way down to County Road 471, several miles away. This is the south section of the village of Shady Brook. There's no connection between it and the northern section, so when you want to go get your mail from here, you've got a bit of a trek down to the Shady Brook Postal Station. But it's a beautiful area, so at least it won't be too unpleasant of a drive. Here on the screen you can see some of the many natural wetlands areas that have been preserved as well as some of the massive retention ponds that have been built in this area. Hi fellow villagers, it's Steve from Gold Shield Cart Alarms. Unfortunately, golf cart thefts are a growing concern here in the villages. I offer an affordable solution. Our golf cart alarms are easy to operate, <coughs> maintenance free, and are an effective deterrent. Call me or visit our website. Protect your investment. Gold Shield Cart Alarms. There's a lot of water that's going to come into play when you play the Shallow Creek Golf Course. For me, eh, it's just another way to lose balls. The course is looking pretty good, but it's obvious it still has a few more months of growing in before it'll be ready to play. But that's okay because, as you'll see here in just a second, the clubhouse, the restaurant, they all have quite a bit more work to go also. If you're building a home in Moultrie Creek or Dabney, be sure to reach out to me at goldwingnut.com for a package of photos and videos of your home being built from groundbreaking through completion. Again, it's goldwingnut.com. Click on the Our Services tab. And now we're back in the village of Moultrie Creek.
I'll do a quick fly around now of the new country club that's being built, and you'll get an idea of what it's looking like so far. And yes, there are golf carts in the construction area again. Please, folks, stay out of the construction area. It's dangerous. You don't want to be there. You don't want to get hurt. Please. This is the back side, and this is where Boosters is at. Looking at the construction so far, it doesn't look like there will be an outside deck up top where you'll be able to sit and watch the sunset and what have you, because I don't see any doors around the upper section. There's also not a lot of structural support holding up that section of the roof that would be necessary for all the weight of extra people. It's a shame, because I think they really missed a golden opportunity there. We're going to fly backwards and up now to get a nice big overview of the clubhouse and Shallow Creek Golf Course. In this next segment, we go to an area that I, I don't want to say I found, but I stumbled across when I was out doing all my driving in preparation for making this video. I do a lot of driving around the back roads and looking to see what I can see, and I ended up out here. Now, this is in an area of the villages that I visited about two years ago when they were clearing this area, and I didn't think much of it. I figured, well, you know, it's, it's long term. But what's out here? Well, obviously not much. You see the big piles of rock? That's limestone that they've cleared from the land when they were clearing this area. Basically, though, where we're at is about three miles south of the high school. And I'm going to zoom in on the high school and, and the Middleton area in just a minute. Here we go. And you can see it off in the distance. That green area, that's the golf course. That's the Shallow Creek Golf Course. And, we, and as we pan left, we see the village of Moultrie Creek. And continuing to pan left, we see the high school off in the distance. Again, these are about three miles away. And we continue to pan left, and we'll see the Middleton community and the cement plant. Now, none of this in and of itself is really of much interest or of consequence, but then I remembered a picture that I had stumbled across, oh gosh, it's been six, eight, maybe nine months ago, that I found online, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. But it shows this area in an early stage of pre-development and planning. Now, as you know, the Villages is very good on their long-term planning, so let me show you this picture now. So this is a screenshot of a cell phone screenshot that shows a future development map. And I'm going to zoom in on it. I apologize for the quality, but I think there's enough detail that you can see what I'm seeing. So the most prominent thing you see on this map is this orange dot right here. Now, if you look at the rest of the map, you can see orange up around Middleton and the Eastport development. So that tells me that this is probably the location of the next town square after Eastport and Middleton. Now, how far along is that? It's probably 10, 12, maybe even 15 years away, but they're doing long-term planning, obviously. Where is this in relation to everything else? Well, it's about five miles south of Eastport, which coincides with what I talked about, the distance between Eastport and Brownwood, and Brownwood and Lake Sumter Landing. The other thing you notice on this map is that the Secret Promise properties, as well as the properties on the south side of 470, below Dabney, are also missing. So this is a relatively old picture, and I'm not even sure of its pedigree, but it is consistent with other pictures that I've seen published by the villages and their engineering firms. We get another quick look at the high school, and as you can see, it's still quite a ways away. The reason I'm showing you this is I thought it was interesting, and it definitely shows a very long-term commitment by the developer for the development of the villages in the next few decades to come. The dark spot on the ground towards the top of the screen is what is known as Rock Prairie. Again, we'll pan to the right. This, I believe, is the approximate area of Town Square number five, or maybe six, who knows. So this has been a look in the long-term future of what's coming to the villages. It could change, and it probably will, but who knows. None of this is official. It's just my speculation at this point. Now we'll head on over to the residential section of Middleton and look at the work going on there and some of the other construction around it. The first thing we see here is the new playground in this park. You have a couple of kids playing in it. It's a very nice area. They've got a pool, courts for pickleball and tennis and, and basketball and a little walking trail. It's a very nice little area. Across the pond, between Dodson Drive and County Road 470, you can see some construction started here. This is going to be some office buildings. These office buildings, as I understand it, will be where the designers for the villages will be doing their work. Not the homes, but the actual architecture of 
the whole community. You can see there's one area right here that's already started work. The big lake in the background is actually one of the old played out mines that's in this area. As you can see, there are lots of homes being built here in Middleton. They range anywhere from being what's considered a patio here in the villages up to what's considered a premier home. These two rows of homes just to the south of this parking lot are actually what would be considered patio homes, but the difference is many of these are custom builds, something that you don't see in the retirement portion of the villages. I've seen some comments online about sales in Middleton and people saying that, well, it's not up to their expectations. Their expectations for Middleton are much different than they are for the retirement community. It's certainly a much different market, but I think any developer would still be happy with the level of sales that they're getting. The sales are certainly much better than what they're seeing up in the Beaumont development. They don't have nearly this many houses sold, and they've been open for three years. The lighter area in the top of the screen is the next phase of the Middleton residential area, and also towards the east is where the apartment complex is scheduled to go. We're at the last area of this video now, the downtown area of Middleton. We'll start out from the high school because it's always a good reference point. We'll rotate around to our east, and this area, just to the left of this red pickup truck you see coming down the road, is where a hotel is going. Thought it was interesting they're going to put a hotel near the high school, but it kind of makes sense because of the activities and the facilities that are available in the high school. There are several large commercial buildings under construction right now. Most of the ground floor areas will be stores, and the upstairs areas will be office space. In the last video, I put out some incorrect information on where the Four Rivers restaurant is going to be. I said it was going to be at the north end of the Middleton downtown area, when in fact, it's directly across the street from the new high school. I apologize for that. I misread the diagram I was looking at. On the right is the new Citizens First Bank, and the small building at the top of the screen is a coffee shop. In a recent Daily Sun article, they mentioned quite a few different types of businesses going into Middleton, but the only two that have really been named are Four Rivers and Citizens First Bank. Unfortunately, it's been about nine or ten months since they put out a Continuing the Dream supplement in the Daily Sun. So I'm trying to make up for their shortfalls. And I'll be, as the title of this video says, following the dream. This small building right here is called the Boathouse, and it's going to be the home to another restaurant. We've still got about a minute to go, but I wanted to thank you all for watching, and I wanted to encourage you to support my sponsors. Without their help, and without your watching, these videos would not be possible. There's a bit of a curiosity on the back side of this building. You can see this one entry with a rather large awning over it. Don't know what it's going to be. It'll be interesting to see what that unit turns out to be. As we come back around to the front of the high school, we'll take a quick look at the entertainment stage that's here. As always, I would like to encourage you to find the good things in life and live life to its fullest. Our days here are so numbered. I'm Don Wiley. Have a good day. Thank you.